everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We're coming to you live here from Gen Con 2019, bringing you board game coverage from all week long. Uh, and right now, I am joined with Rainer from Board and Dice. How are you yes. doing today? Good. First day of the convention. Yes. Crazy yet? Yes. <laughs> I saw the it, crowd of people it started. Outside. It started off uh, crazy. We had a, had a line at our booth this morning, but it has... Since then, become a manageable pace. So manageable, but still crazy. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> that's Gen Con, but that's good. Exactly. So, uh, so we we have an extended slot here today, and you brought a couple things to show yes, off. Yes. So let's did. just jump right into the meat and potatoes of things here. So what are we showing off first? So we are going to be talking about Trismegistus, and this is a uh, game by Daniel Tuscini and Federico P uh, uh, Pellorenzi, mm -hmm. uh, and it's coming out at Essen. Uh, and this is a game that uh, a lot of people are familiar with uh, Teotihuacan, which was our release from last year. And of course, here at Gen Con, we have the expansion for it. Mm -hmm. And and this is one that um, is is uh, going to be coming out, which is also a, a one of our heavier uh, Euro games, uh, where uh, people take on the roles of uh, ancient alchemists uh, that are basically competing uh, for greatness and in order to show off their, their skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a it's a dice drafting game, and one thing that is that is a uh, bit unique about it is that a lot of Euro type games typically you have a variety of resources that you are managing and, right. and so forth. And here it's really there's a single resource called materials. Okay. And it's just that th these materials they exist in different uh, different stages, and you can transmute them and upgrade them from one stage uh, to another. Traditional alchemy. Stuff Correct. Right there, yes. Yeah. And, and so, so what we have here uh, on the the central board, this kind of shows um, a bit of of this is the the main board that would be in the location. What we're looking at here, there are several, as you can see, there there's a couple of spots in the center. Mm -hmm. And since this is a dice drafting game, uh, there will be dice that are rolled, and then based on the symbols, they will be then as, uh, allocated to the different bowls that match those uh, those symbols. So and it's safe to say there's six symbols correct. on the dice as well. That okay. is correct. Yes. So after after rolling the dice, they will all be be uh, allocated to the different bowls. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are dealing with here uh, when it's when we're talking about these dice are are three different things. One, we have the symbol. So each die has all six symbols on them. Okay. And then of course they they come in three different colors. As well as after we have placed them in here, there will be a different number of, of dice in each of these uh, six bowls on mm -hmm. the board. And, and you, have to, you have to take all of those things into consideration because as you're drafting uh, dice from this common pool, not only do you, will you, d this will, uh, the symbol would determine the type of uh, starting uh, stage of, of materials that you can basically uh, acquire. Okay. But it will also determine, based on the color of it, the types of transmutations that you can perform, as well as how many dice that are here will determine the potency, uh, basically the number of actions that you can take. Oh, okay. So, so there will be uh, up to uh, up to s to five dice in, in each location. So the most that you can get is five actions uh, out of that. Okay. Then on the board, uh, each of these balls are also associated with a place where there will be experiments that you can draft uh, from there. Uh, trying to conduct these different experiments, which will incre increase your mastery. There's a place where you track the mastery, the four different elements of earth, uh, fire, water, and, and air. Mm -hmm. And and how you manage, uh, basically, the dice that you draft, you'll be drafting a total of just nine dice over the course of the game. But oh, really? each of those dice, so that the decision of which one to draft is very important. Now, there is also uh, a, a wild symbol uh, that will basically allow you to choose any of the other ones so that there's there's a lot of ways to, to mitigate. And especially because the the choices that you have is both the potency, the, the starting uh, elements, as well as uh, the types of transmutations that you can perform. So you were saying that you have up to only five dice in each one of those uh, bowls there. So what happens if you roll more than that number of dice? Then symbols? basically you re-roll those and distribute them uh -huh. uh, across the other ones. So there gotcha. will never be more than five. But, it's, but it is possible uh, that some of the bowls would be empty, for example, mm -hmm. um, as well. So let me uh, replace uh, that and just put this uh, on top. So what we're looking at here, this is basically the player board. Uh, so each player will have uh, a board like this that shows a number of different things. First of all, uh, this is the, the individual that you're represented by. This could be, uh, for example, it could be Sir Isaac Newton or, or someone else who's a, a known uh, scientist from, from history. Mm -hmm. um, each of, of the, the different alchemists, they have uh, 
you have a track where you can transmute your the materials and improve their their quality and impr improve their purity you also have everyone is trying to achieve uh, and 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 collect the formulas for the philosopher's stone okay um, and basically th there there are several ways that you can do that um, well let me ex uh, start first by by so let's say that this was the the uh, die that I had drafted right and if it was a starting potency of three that means that I now have I have three actions that I can spend to either collect the materials, which in this case, if, if that's the one that I'm collecting, I would basically just put uh, a cube here to, to show that that's the material that I have collected. Okay. But I can also do a transmutation. Now, there are three different paths on here. There's the black, the white, and the red path where I can transmute. So that means that even though this one gave me this starting material, I would only be able to transmute from over here along one of the white paths. And to those to three paths correlate to the colors of the dice that you were correct. drafting the first correct. time. Gotcha. So, so you have you have a lot of deci different decisions to make because ultimately all of the materials are important. The different stages of them, even if it's if it's the, the iron or and, and lead, for example, uh, but also of course silver and gold. And the purer they are, uh, like silver and gold, they can also be used as wild as a replacement for other uh, materials and other requirements um, in the game. You you are going to be. Um, trying to complete uh, these different experiments. So here's an example that we can show. Sure um, and, and what you see there is you see up in the top left corner that shows you the requirements. So these are the different materials. And they exist in, in either a raw or a, a purified state. Um, and, and of course, if it's a purified state, that can be substituted so that they can be count as, as a raw state as well. But it also shows you, in this case, uh, the element in the top right corner, the requirement for you to be able to uh, to complete this uh, experiment and as well in the bottom you s see on the right side a uh, number of victory points that you will gain and then an immediate benefit for completing that experiment so the different experiments they will give you access to to new actions to be able to to get benefits from from your formulas and so forth as well as different artifacts that you can also um, complete and the artifacts what they will do is they will they will slot into to these different slots uh, on the board and again, you see that there are these ones that are uh, corresponding to the black, the white, and red transmutations. Mm -hmm. That means that if I have a material here and I'm transmuting it using the, the white uh, paths, so I'm transmuting from here to here, I also get the benefit of that artifact because this, this one is associated with transmutation along that path. Mm -hmm. So, so there's, there's a lot of things to, to consider in uh, as you are, like every, every each of the three rounds, you will be drafting three dice using the action points provided by uh, by that tr to try to get the materials that you need to complete experiments, uh, acquire artifacts, and so forth, to, of course, collect as much victory points as, as possible. There are several uh, objectives, for example, associated with the mastery tracks, depending on, on how good you are at, for example, fire-related elements and, and so forth. Uh, so this is one that is, is going to be coming out at Essen uh, this year, and we're very excited about it um, to... Uh, it's, it has a very neat take on mechanisms that you are familiar with, but that will be displayed in a, in a different um, way here as well. And, and one thing, um, when you complete an experiment, for example, because this is a fire experiment, I get the benefit of also uh, completing one of the, the formulas that I'm trying to acquire for the Philosopher's Stone. Okay. And I can put this, this one anywhere. So you see there are eight of them total. There are only seven spots here. Mm -hmm. And and every time that I complete one of the four experiments, I can take either one of these. The second one I would have to to purchase with uh, with gold to to unlock that one. But otherwise, not only do these give you a one-time benefit, but also for completing uh, rows and columns of these, then I give you the be benefits on the end. Yeah, additional and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so oh there's okay. there's a lot of things how how things will start to chain together, and and even though you only have effectively nine dice that you're drafting over the course of the game for a maximum of um, 45 actions, which is not likely, but but more so somewhere in the 25 to 30 uh, mm. range. Right, right. But each action will be have very m meaningful options for you and to, to decide what you uh, what you want to, to draft and, and do with that. So Very cool. I, I like what you said very early on in the beginning about how um, this game kind of reduces what a lot of the heavier heroes do with having a mm -hmm. million different ways to gather different resources. And kind of reduces it down, boils it down to you have 
your materials that you're going right. for. Yep. And just having the different random permutations of those because of the dice rolls, I thought that was a really neat option that you know kind of simplifies things without taking away from the strategic complexity of the right. game. Right. Yeah. And and it becomes more of what what do you do with the materials that you have collected, right? And and they are all valuable at their different states and, and there's so there's there's no bad decision, right? It's just about making sure that you make efficient uh, choices and that you utilize the actions that you have. And sometimes you might be looking at a, a particular why well, I'd like to draft a white die, for example, for that. But if I draft this other one, that would give me a greater potency. Maybe I will do some of the other actions now. And, and so you have a lot of ways to, and then of course there, there are ways to, to mitigate uh, so that you can, y you can use this, uh, f for example, this, this particular benefit here, the, the chameleon allows you to change either the symbol or the color uh, of the die. So you have multiple ways of mitigating the results as well. So, so you don't feel stuck with anything. Right, right. There's, there's always a good option for you, something for you to draft. Just a matter of what do you do, how do you maximize the, the potential of the dice that you have drafted. And I know you mentioned before about some of the materials having a higher potency, like the gold and silver, which right. kind of act more as wild yes. cards anyway. Yep. So different ways so you're not uh, kind of getting to the the dead end right path. right so um this is one of you said this is just one individual player board yes right so so everyone will get uh a, their the unique player board and these uh these different uh formulas for the philosopher's stone are all unique uh there's also unique uh starting uh cards and and uh starting experiments and starting uh, artifacts that, that you can have depending on your on the character that you're playing oh wow okay so like even so the individual like boons that you're gaining from these boards mm -hmm. are all different based on the different characters. Yes, too. and oh especially really cool. especially this this central portion here. So these these tiles that are, that make up the formulas. Uh, so so they each character. So each time I'm playing this character, I will have these same eight, and and I randomly place them out. That means that okay, in this case, these two were were the ones that went in the fire slot, for example. Mm -hmm. A different setup. Maybe they went uh, elsewhere. But then you also have the benefits that you get for completing the rows and columns are unique to that character, so that some of them specialize in certain types uh, of uh, certain types of experiments, certain types of of elements, and and so forth. Very cool. So, so is is that thematically based on the character player boards that they are, or is it to to a certain extent? Okay. Uh, a, a lot of it is, is of course also making sure that there's balance. The game balance yeah. uh, in there. Yeah. Very cool. So, so which which one do you like to play as the most? Um, I I like. I mean, I I like them them differently. I, the one that I like is uh, mostly because of the the last name is Bacon. So <laughs> so that's that's one of my Sir Francis my Bacon. Yes. There you go. <laughs> really cool though. Um, so this game supports up to how many players? Uh, up to four players. Up to four players yes. and game and so time. it's one to four. So you can uh, oh, you, you can, can solo, play it solo too, as then. well. Yes. Oh neat. And and one thing that we do with every game that uh, that has uh, solo play in it. It's it is against an AI, so you actually have to make sure that you beat the opponent. It's just not it's not a matter of just completing certain objectives. Can you get or the a highest certain score? Right, yeah. but it's it's an actual opponent that you have to to play against. So gotcha. Uh, and then what's the runtime of this game? Play time. So it's about uh, it's about two hours uh, okay. with four players. So the that's yeah about average for for this. It sounds good. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk? And so I'm going to butcher the name, Trace Magistus. Trace Magistus. Trace Magistus. Yes. Okay. No, I mean, I mean, basically, it's that there's there's a variety of we we've just shown uh, some of the things. There's there's a pile of different artifacts, uh, different experiments. Uh, when those come out, so there's in the setup, there's certainly uh, random elements uh, that you have to. So so you're going to get there's a lot of replayability in it, both with the the different. Um, Alchemists themselves and, and the setup and, and kind of the path that you that you take throughout the game. Very cool. So let's jump into what else you have brought to us here today. Now I have something that I I will apologize a little bit because I know that this is uh, something that is uh, very much anticipated. Uh, we had at Essen last year we had uh, Escape Tales: The Awakening, which is a an escape room. Uh, type game that is there's replayable. Uh, okay. So so the original one has had eight different endings, and and uh, you could replay it and and uh, basically it's a lot of times the experience that you will have in one room versus the other will be based on uh, the d decisions that you made in the previous room. So if if you and I played uh, the game. 
but we made different decisions and ended up in the same room, we may have different choices to make based on, on previous choices. Gotcha. Yeah. So it offers some replayability there. Yes. Obviously you will if you played enough, you'll see all the, the, the that different is ending scenarios. Yes. And and this so this one is, is Escape Tales Low Memory, uh, which is the next in the in the series. The stories are not connected, but it is again a very story driven escape room game. And and what this one does, there are there are three different characters uh, in the game. And you start off playing through the story as one of the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, you will play through as the second one and the third one. And, and even though they, you're not playing through the same experience, but you're playing through the same general story from three different uh, perspectives. And then at the end, the, at the conclusion of, of playing through with the third, uh, that, that, then that's w where basically the, the whole plot uh, has become revealed. Gotcha. So it's, it's like a partial information based off of each of the individual characters. Correct. And there's some interconnectedness there. Correct. At the end, it's the grand reveal. Right. So, so you will be playing through as the first character, and you will make certain decisions. And that carries over and affects the experience that you have when you play with the next character. Mm -hmm. And and so forth. So so it's and again, this is a a story driven one. There are eleven different endings uh, to it. Okay. Uh, so as you go through the game, that you will have, you will start to the 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 story will start to unravel, and you will find okay, well this is the goal that you have as a player, and of course you're trying to to find your way through the story, the decisions you make to lead towards that goal, which hopefully you that's that's the goal that you will end up with. But it's also possible that. Along the way, things uh, th there there will be just like there were a lot of surprises in the original game. There will be things here that will happen, different events that take place that will surprise you, and, and difficult decisions you have to make, as well as as different puzzles and so forth that you have to to solve. So you mentioned there being eleven different endings. Does that mean that if so, because there's three different playthroughs here for the three Correct. characters, does each character have different endings, or is it kind it's of the at interconnectedness? The, at the end okay. of, so after playing through uh, the entire story, there are 11 different ways that that uh, story can take you. Gotcha. So, and it's in just like with the the previous one, uh, all of the games in the, the Escape Tales line, they uh, y the total playtime uh, per per character is between two and three hours. So the total play time is up to nine hours, but you can pause it at any point, and it's easy to to pause and continue off of where you have um, left off uh, previously. So, so you don't have to 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 play it in one sitting, but you do get a lot of uh, play time out of it um, as well. And then, of course, if you would like to to try to experience a different path, or you feel like you want to uh, try to achieve a different success uh, in the game, then you can play and make different choices, and your experience will be drastically different. So. Very cool. So this is something that I, I don't think that I've seen before with the standalone interconnected tales just kind of leading into a large final arc right. for one of these uh, escape room type games. So how do you think that that plays out, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things? Well, so, so the nice thing is that when you when you start uh, the game uh, is is that you you get you get kind of a background of, of the story. So, for example, in, in the original one, uh, Escape Tales: The Awakening, you take on the role of a father whose daughter is in a coma, mm -hmm. and and of course you're trying to to save uh, her life. And and the nice thing is that as you are playing the game and as you're making decisions you slowly learn things that have happened and, and such. And it's the same thing here where there will be, there will be things. I, I don't want to, to reveal uh, too much about the, the story because that's, uh, no I mean, that, no that's part of that. Right. No spoilers. Um, and, but but it's, it, it's, it's neat that there are the, the puzzles and the story and, and the theme around it as well as the decisions that you make and the rooms that, that you will be going through are all tied to an overarching story, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why the the um, design and development process for this is, is fairly long for us um, because we want to make sure that that's all an interconnected uh, experience. So it's it's very immersive and, and it's something that, that you you become emotionally attached to the characters, to the story, how it unfolds and, and so forth. Is there any background as to like the setting of this one that you can give me without spoiling? So, anything? so this one has, as you can tell from the cover, this has a uh, there's a, a certain sci-fi uh, vibe to it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bit of a Minority Report feel to it. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, that's 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 all I can I can say as as far as um, where the 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 story takes you. So.
Perfect. So when and where is this one available? So this one uh, is also an SN release. Uh, so and I should say, I don't know if I said it with uh, Tris Magistus, but both of these, even though they would be premiering at SN, the retail release will be at the same time. So don't worry if you're uh, here in North America, you'll be able to uh, to find these in retail uh, around that same time. So grab it at your friendly local game yep. store. Perfect. And I think there was one more you brought. There too. is one more. Now this is one that uh, people may be familiar with, uh, a game that came out uh, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, Yedo uh, by two Belgian designers. And uh, we will be doing a, a reprint of, of the game this year. Uh, it will be coming to Kickstarter middle of uh, September. And it will be taking uh, the base game as well as previous uh, content that was released for expansion content will be reprinted. Uh, there will be uh, also new content that is added, and one of the things that I, that we have to show as well will be will be new uh, characters. Uh, there will be specialists that will give you certain abilities during the game and so forth. So you will have uh, very nice upgraded components. Um, th there's new artwork that will be uh, becoming, and we will be showing more of this uh, also on on our social media channels. Uh, some of the things that are coming, and one thing that is nice is that the the, the, there will be updated gameplay. There, there, even though this this is a, a game about a lot of conflict in in Japan, but some people felt oh, there was a little bit too much. Uh, they would like a slightly gentler experience. And you can customize now the experience. So so the designers have worked with us to to come up with ways for you as a player to customize the experience. Do you want it where it's very competitive between the players and very very uh, rough that way mm -hmm. or do you want more of a gentler experience you can combine it you can customize it uh, new content uh, for it as well and one of the other things uh, that, that we have to show is that we have the updated uh, player boards as well oh, um, and so so a lot of work that has gone into um, just while staying true to the to the original content and and the graphics that that's it's a very well loved uh, artwork and graphic design for it, but it has also been updated with with new and fresh. So these, even though this one is just for the for the prototype, mm. but these will be uh, nice uh, layered cardboards with with cutouts and and stuff and recessed uh, areas for your um, player pieces and, and so forth. So, so this is uh, September uh, for for the Kickstarter, and then of course this this will come out next year. So talk to me a little bit more about customizing the actual play experience because yeah. that's that really intrigues me. So how do you incorporate that into the game? What is actually changing? Is it changing the the goals? Is it changing rule sets? So uh, there there were uh, there were decks of cards uh, previously that uh, that will kind of set the stage of um, how the game will play out, then the conflicts between the players. Now there are uh, more of those decks, as well as ways for you to customize which cards go in there, so that you can customize. Do you want a, a very cutthroat experience between the players? If that's what you want, then you can do that. Or you can decide we want a more gentler approach, and then you play with the, with certain other cards. And there are also more uh, more weapons and so forth. So you can you can by by choosing the basically the, there there there's more con more versions of the existing content that was there okay uh, and ways for you to then s say okay well I'd like to play with these uh, these weapons and and so forth that will allow you to to decide uh, the kind of how how you want the game to to play out so you can play the the game uh, the, w the way it was originally designed all of that is is in the game but you will also have more options to to customize that experience to your liking along with uh, additional expansion content that so is that designers. is that something like in in the rule book itself it'll say if you want this game experience put in this list of cards so, so it will be it, it will be pre uh, so, so so it'll be suggested ways of, of okay. uh, so so this this is the original setup if you want uh, this experience these are the cards that you will be playing with but you still have the freedom of completely customizing it to your liking so so there will be suggested setups uh, that you can that you can use uh, but otherwise, if if you have played the game and you want to to customize that, you can do that as well. So, by having these different styles that you can play it as, how different is it within kind of the the backbone of the me mechanics of the game itself? So, are you getting kind of like very different gaming experiences with that? It's it's more so the 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 experience and, and how it feels between the players, right? Is okay. it is it a a high uh, interaction and and so, some people feel that it's 
the game the game could be very mean uh, between the players and and some people love that others do not so much and so it's more so that of, of finding the right balance of what what you and your game group so so right. you'll be able to to play the game and because it's it's one of those games that I mean people people love the the story has a very right rich um, theme uh, surrounding it that as well especially with with the artwork and so forth but there were some people that felt well s certain aspects were too mean or too too aggressive and and now you'll be able to enjoy the game while customizing kind of that level of, of how you want it to be for your game group gotcha so yeah with with twist gaming the way that we kind of operate is I'm much more of the backstabby person so I think I would go for like I, the I higher approve. player interaction yep. style whereas uh, one of our other streamers Anne is uh, it's not her favorite game style right. so having the more um, isolated less negative interaction with players Correct. would probably be her choice yep. and that, that's really cool that the game gives you the option to kind of choose and maybe even come to a balanced center point between right. the two if you want to kind of try and make everyone happy. And, and it's it's a way for, for people to uh, because often you're going to have that right in different gaming groups where some people love a lot of the, the very intense interaction between the players and others uh, do not. So now you can you can find a way to enjoy this, this game um, bit between you. So. so this is a game that existed. How long ago was the original of this game made? This was 2012 if I'm not mistaken okay, so is, it's, is it's when not it came out old so it's, no. it's it's no. something like a fan favorite from recent correct and it's and it's been out of both the the base game and the expansions uh, content has has been out of print so basically now all of the the previous content is being brought back as well as additional content and new ways to play the game now were you working with the original designers on this one? yes okay yeah. so yeah. pretty easy to keep the the feel and familiarity correct of the game and, and in the fact they, they are the ones that have that have then designed the the new ways and the new experience for it so so this is this is their uh, design of, of of that so it's not us taking it and trying to do something with it it's, it's them working with us too to provide that so so pretty safe to say then if you're a fan of the original you're gonna like definitely what's coming out here definitely. so you said that's coming to Kickstarter in September in September uh, yes. do you have a fulfillment date set up for that yet or so it, it will be 2020 is the the fulfillment so so likely uh, towards uh, summer of, of 2020 fantastic all right you, you brought a lot of stuff to show yeah. up today that's I mean it all looks really great Super stoked about it, but uh, for everything else that's going down in the pipeline of Board and Dice right now, where can our viewers go to find out more information? Uh, you can find us uh, on Facebook, uh, Board and Dice. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter, at Board and Dice. And, of course, uh, we are active on uh, other social media. You can find us through our fine media partners uh, as well. So, so, yes, find us through your favorite media partners and on, on traditional uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and so forth. So the last thing I gotta ask: Is there anything else that you didn't bring to show off to us that maybe I can get a little bit of behind-the-scenes info on? Sure, uh, I can let you know. So, so we have, of course, like I said, here we have, uh, which we showed at uh, Origins. Um, we oh, no, actually no, it was at uh, Gamma. Uh, we showed uh, Sierra West and the Teotihuacan expansion, which are releasing right now, and. If you are not here, uh, again, you will be able to buy it from your local game store. Uh, it's releasing this week uh, everywhere as well. Um, we have coming up for, for the, the fall, we have uh, an expansion for Dice Settlers will be coming out. Oh, nice. Uh, that adds uh, a couple of, of new types of dice. Uh, it adds an element of exploration uh, uh, at sea uh, with islands you can discover, uh, new ways, new paths of... of Exploring and expanding uh, your presence um, as well, um, and of course the, there's there's uh, more things uh, to to expect for us from us in the future. Uh, we know that's uh, es especially some of these titles that are that are uh, well loved, like uh, Escape Tales. There are plans to keep supporting that in the future. Keep uh, the more expansion going. content for Teotihuacan down the road, and can't reveal the details about it, but more I will understand. be coming. So. So what you're saying is you're you're pretty busy. <laughs> it's been busy. <laughs> Good busy though. And if you're if you're at Gen Con, uh, please stop by the booth and say hi. We'd love to to shake your hand and we have candy. So oh, oh yeah, I'm I'm down. Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right, Rainer. Thank you so much for joining thank us today. You. We really do appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching at home. We're gonna take a little bit of an intermission right now, but we'll be back after a uh, a little bit of a break to bring you more coverage here from Gen Con 2019. Signing off for now though. I'm Matt. 
Have a good one, everyone.